Well, good morning, Swish and Homestead here. Guess what, guys? Today is a game-changing day. We did not know about this until the last minute, and it, it was a lot of decisions made quick on what we were gonna do. Man, big game changer. I mean, this is the next step for our homestead. Um, some of you will agree with this. Some of you won't agree with this. I apologize to you that won't agree with this, but we have to have this. Now, in the process of setting up your homestead, there's certain things that you're gonna need. Now, we did do a rainwater catchment system for our garden, which has been doing phenomenal. We have done a rain catchment system for our chicken coop, which has also done phenomenal. But the problem is, is a rain catchment system for the house. Well, our house ain't here yet. And until the house gets here, who knows how much we probably get. Now, today is a game changer. I just, I'm kind of amazed that we're getting this done right now but these guys that are out here are phenomenal and if you guys are looking for somebody to do this for you guess what these are the guys to do it because i'll tell you what they're hardworking, good honest guys and they're not going to take you for your wallet let me tell you that much but it is a gamble so as we all know I don't know if I told you guys, but I was out here and I was witching. Yes, I was witching. I had a friend of mine, Wes. Hey, Wes, how you doing, brother? Teach me how to do witching. Witching is a style of checking to find water below ground. And never really heard about it before when I, <laughs> until I moved out here. And, and there's a lot of old timers that do it. And supposedly the Amish can take and tell you where the water's at, how many, just about how many feet or down the water is by using a watch and a pocket watch and swinging it back and forth. How they do it, I don't know, but I need to talk to an Amish person. I need to find this out. I think we need to do something on that because I think it would be awesome. So the guys, unfortunately yesterday, we were not here. We had left. We had to go pick up my boy. My boy's here, so you guys can get to see him on camera. He's awesome. He's a good kid. He's young. It's going to be his first time out on the farm. I can't wait. You guys will have to watch him grow. I think it's going to be a really cool situation for us. I mean, this is just, you know, this is what we, this is what we, we live for right here, right? Isn't this what we love? Isn't this the reason why we homestead? Well, on that homestead. You need certain things, and I'll tell you what, you ready? It's about to come. It's about to come. It's about to come. And there it is. Guys, we're getting our well drilled. I uh, had these guys out here, and let me tell you, had them come out with uh, some rods, too, to test the ground for water. And pronounced to me, when I was looking, we actually sit up on a lake. There is a cavern actually down below us. How deep? We don't know. Right now, I think we're at, what was it? I think we're at 53 feet right now. We've drilled so far. That's it. But from what I understand, he held that rod in his hand right where that drill head's at. Right there. And that rod just spun like crazy and just kept spinning. So there is definitely a mount full of water running through here. Now you're probably asking why would I drill a well, why not do rain catchment? Well, rain catchment is great, but we plan on taking a big percentage of our acreage that we have over here and we're doing paddocks. So I'm gonna have sheep and pigs and cows you can't go with just rainwater to try to feed your cows or to try to feed your pigs and your chickens and everything. You have to have a lot of water and you have to have available water. And we need available source of water. Plus we need water for our house that's gonna be built that we're gonna put right there. So we got a lot going on, but let me tell you these guys. Uh, these guys, I watched them drill a well about two days ago at my friend Wes, his house. These guys are hardworking individuals. These guys are no, no playing. They're truthful, they're honest, they're, 
I just can't believe because I've heard some bad horror stories about well drillers going out and drilling wells and just, they don't even wet you. They just drop the well. Oh, it looks good right here. And they drill. These guys will actually come out and they'll try to find your water source before they even drill. And they will honestly tell you, look, this may be a good spot, but this spot over here about 10 feet will be a better spot for you to drill. These guys do their job. I mean, these guys are really, really into their work. I mean, this is this is a muck muddy work right here, man. I mean, that's that's pretty that's pretty bad. Now, if you're all wondering why is it like that, well, that is chert and gravel and clay mix. We haven't hit the limestone yet. So when we hit the limestone, that color will actually change. It'll go to like a gray, milky color. And when we get to that point, we get through that limestone, that crevice in that limestone is our water source. So it's filtered. So the guys seem to think that I'm gonna have probably some of the best water up here on this ridge. And from what I understand from the old timers, I have a lake underneath me, which means I will probably have enough water here on the homestead for generations to come. Yes, generations to come. Um, over here in the garden area where I built that overhang for the garden, um, I was standing there with Amy one day and I hit one of the poles was like, well, this is nice and sturdy, this is great. When I hit the pole, you could feel the vibration on the ground. So I got one of the guys from the well drilling thing and I walked him over, I said, stand right here. And I hit that pole and he looked and he says, man, that's hollow under here. And I said, yeah, I know it's hollow under there. But you know, hey. So these guys are gonna drill this well. Now what's really cool about well drilling, if you guys want to go on YouTube, look up well drilling and watch it. But if you look up there, here, I'll try to get a close up. Let's see if I can get a close up for you guys. See that head right there? Here, let's see. This is not gonna be easy for me, but see that head right there? What happens is it'll push this pipe all the way down in. Now each strand of pipe is 20 foot. The attachment for doing the drilling is 13 foot. So immediately you have 13 foot that has your grinding stone on the front, which is a carbide bit, apparently. And that is what will start the drill through the ground. Now they do have another bit they call a hammer bit that when they hit solid hard rock, they'll swap those out. They'll put the hammer bit on there and it'll just vibrate and it'll just crush the rock ever so softly as it goes through. Now, as you can see the top of this one right there, that right there, this whole thing will swing over to there and it will actually screw it in. It'll drive it down to this point right here, if you guys can see that clip right there, that clip right there, right there, oh, look at it. that clip right there is a locking mechanism that locks it in. Now, I can't really show you, well, it's, it's already locked in. It locks in, it holds it, and then it screws it on. It, it, it's really cool, I've never seen this done, so to me, this is like really, really cool stuff. But, uh-oh. Look at that, guys. Looks like we've had some deer walking through here. Don't know what they were doing, but they were walking through here. Huh. Yeah, we've had some deer walking through here. That's pretty cool. So, anyway, back to a uh, squirrel. <laughs> So what these guys are gonna do is they're gonna attach more of these and they're gonna drop them down in and we're gonna see how far we get. Now I'm hoping we get about 75 foot and that'll be perfect. I hope less than that, but until we hit the cavern, we won't know. So what they'll do is they'll do that. Then they'll go over there and they'll pick up that white pipe and that's the casing. I chose PVC because PVC lasts a long time. I do not wanna do, I don't wanna do, uh, uh, steel pipe. Steel pipe has a point of corroding. Steel pipe can eventually take its toll. 
Um, PVC seems like a better choice because PVC lasts forever. I could have gone with stainless steel casing. Yes, I could have. But let me tell you, stainless steel casing also will will pit and rust semi too. So to get away from that, we just decided to do it with PVC. Now, these guys, like I said, are phenomenal. They're good workers. I can't wait. We should have water today. I'm excited. I'm really excited. But let me tell you, drilling is a gamble. Drilling is like going to a casino and putting your money on the table and hoping that you, you hit it. Because if you don't, you just drilled and you just gave the casino your money, which normally happens all the time anyways. I actually think the odds of hitting a well are better. <laughs> Be honest with you. But so these are the guys. This is what we got going on. This is it. This is the big news. And my boy's here. My boy. I'm kind of excited about that too. You guys will get to meet him here. Hey, he's a squawking and a raising hell. We ain't got no eggs yet, but I'm sure we're going to be getting some soon. You guys will know as soon as we get those eggs. So at that point, we're going to let these guys go to drilling. And hey, let's see where we can get. And we'll hit the water. So at that point, guys, I'm out of here. Let's watch some drilling.
great guy. So, hasn't been that good so far. I'm a little nervous right now. Um, we are now at 93 feet they've drilled so far. We're willing to go to 200. Um, they're getting ready to put in the casing now. So, if you're watching, you'll see them drop the white plate. That's the casing they do. That stops the sidewalls of the well from falling in. And it, it to start to gamble. We may not hit any water. That would really stink. But hey, we're going to try it. So. Good morning! It's the Swisher Family Homestead. Hey, if you guys haven't subscribed, please subscribe, hit that thumbs up. Oh boy, talk about some times. Well, I'd say we felt the bear of of the hit on the homestead finally. Um, you know, a home is normally a home. You have to build it, construct it, it costs you tens of thousands of dollars, which we totally understand. But now, one of the second biggest investments in a homestead is right there. That is the second biggest investment in the homestead, right there. That is our well. Now, problem two, power. As you can hear, I got a generator running in the background right now. Um, I do that for Amy's work. And because it gets hot here, we run an AC unit inside of our tiny house. We're gonna have to go solar, so we'll keep up to date on us because I am looking into putting in a full solar system to run everything on the homestead. Power's just not feasible to have it run here right now. At least we don't think so. Let's see what happens in the next couple of months. Maybe somebody will run it and we can jump off of it and be able to make the rest of the run. 
But right now, to get power out here, we're looking at spending about well, $15,000. I don't want to spend $15,000 when I can get a solar system set up for this for roughly about eight grand. And that's no electric bill. So we're thinking about that. I'm doing the research. Well, let's get back to the well. This is one of your biggest expenditures. When it was all said and done, it cost us almost six grand to have done. Um, I drilled 180 feet down. We hit a 15 foot crevice. Then we hit another about three foot crevice, but all water. We're going to average probably about three, three to four gallons a minute out of this. But it was an investment that had to be done on the homestead. Rain catchment. Let me tell you, rain catchment's not easy. We're still doing it for the garden, so we don't have to use the well as much. The well is basically built for the house. It's put in for the house so we can have the house. Um, my tote for the garden right now is completely full all the way up to the top. We've been getting rain periodically. You can't count on it all the time, but we do get it. So, that's one of the big expenditures, man. It costs a lot of money. So if you're gonna do this homesteading thing, you better think about your water situation because toting water is kind of a pain in the butt after a while. I can hook this thing up to my generator, run it, get it done, have my tote filled up, and not have to go anywhere coming right from the source, right from the pump, right from the well. As clean water as you can get. Now we're going to have to test the water and we're going to do that. We'll show you guys how we do that. There's just a lot of things going on in the homestead right now that whew, you don't count on. And this was not a decision that we were going to make at this point in time. This came on all sudden, last minute. Most things do last minute. And they gave us a deal. Now, our average cost to drill this well would have ended up being about probably eight grand, eight to nine grand with the pump and with the drilling done too. So we actually saved ourselves probably about, I'd say, $4,500 to $5,000 on having the well done now. The reason why we got the deal is because we got everybody else around us to drill too. So when they drilled, it got cheaper as it got down the path. Now I was, I think, the second to last one to get the well put in. Everybody else did it here. Everybody was on board. Everybody worked together, which is a good thing. Uh, a lot of homesteaders out here. Um, some people make it and some people don't. And that's a sad point, but there are some homesteaders here that I think have just recently left that could not take it and be out here like we are. It's not easy being out here. So at that point, guys, that's the well. That's what we ended up with. Five-year warranty on the tank, the pump, everything that they didn't install. That's five years. I get a little bit of five years. The house, again, because we got the well, we pushed the house off until probably November. But I still got my workshop. So my workshop should be here in roughly about... I don't know, six to eight weeks. I know, six to eight weeks. I didn't think it was going to take that long, but they're telling me they're backed up, and I got to wait. So I got to wait. So we stay in our tiny home for right now until we get our house out here. We do the best with what we have. Um, we did have a source of porta potty brought out here because we have our son, and there's really no privacy in the tiny home for him. So we had to have that brought out until he goes back. Once he goes back, we'll send it back and we won't have it anymore. I don't mind, you know, doing the situation that we've got set up right now. So, But at that point, guys, that's the whole point. We got a well now. So now we have a viable source of water all the time. All I got to do is hook it up into my generator and we're good to go. I'm sorry for the generator being so loud, but Amy's in there. She's starting to work. So got to do what you got to do. At that point, guys, we'll see you later. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button, hit that pound, hit that like, hit all of them. Tell your friends about us. It's the Swisher Homestead. We're rocking it out here in Tennessee up in the hills. So we'll talk to you guys later. Take it easy.